Thank you. Moving on to the next item is SPLOSS resolution to approve a change order for the construction of the Fortson Library. Our presenter is Ron Burkhalter, Capital Projects Director, Exhibit Number 3. Good morning. Chairman, Commissioners, good morning. This resolution is for approval of a change order for the Fortson Library in Hampton. The final negotiated change order amount is $32,119. Hogan Construction Group was the contractor on this particular project. The change order breaks down as follows. <clears throat> Cutting off of the cantilever beams, uh, these were uh, steel beams that were designed uh, too long. The engineer has admitted that that was an error. This $1,725 cost uh, was what it took to remodify those beams. There will be a deductive change order in the same amount to the engineer, so the net cost to the county will be zero dollars. We deducted the ionization tubes out of the HVAC system, which was a redundant uh, air purification system that staff decided that we didn't need. It's a small amount of money that we took out, but experience shows that the savings that we're going to have in maintenance and the operation cost of these ionization tubes is going to be a lot more than what we see right here. The corrective work for the overhangs is $32,044. Uh, this came about when in the contract documents the contractor is responsible for the roof truss design. The, uh, the contractor roof trust designer had excluded the overhangs on the Fortson Library. Uh, we wanted the library to look something similar to the train depot. It has six foot overhangs or six foot soffits on the building which are quite large as opposed to your typical. And what this change order did, the, the engineer, the architect had a typical of how to do the overhangs. What this change order does is structurally it takes the, the, the roof truss design and marries in what the architect, so structurally we had an overhang system that worked. With the approval of this change order, the total project cost will be $2,458,541 versus a total budget of 2895000 which will result in a project coming in under budget by $436,459. Any questions? Does any board member have a question? Yes. Mr. Holder? With a change order, this costing an additional $32,000. Is that the way I'm hearing it? Yes, sir. Why could the architect or the engineer or somebody have to help pay for that because they knew what the building was supposed to be. They designed it accordingly. And it was either going to be the architect that drew it or the engineer that did his part. So, I mean, in, but in the, in the change order, we're getting hit with the entire cost. Is that Yes, correct? sir. If, if in the future, we're, because this is an unusual situation with these six-foot overhangs. I, I either, understand, but let me tell you, Ron, from day one, when the plans were some, we first got the architect on board, and it, you had indicated everybody knew that they wanted the train or the train depot look with the wide over, over uh, hangs. Everybody knew it. Why didn't they design it then and make it part of the price, the price that it was bid? Because in the the way the contract documents are, Commissioner, is the contractor is responsible for the roof trusses. They come up with the design on the trusses. You mm -hmm. might have different spacing on your trusses. You might have different size members, you might have bigger okay, I trusses. That. So to contract, marry, you just said the contractor was responsible for that. Yes. Sir. Coming up with the design. Okay, well why isn't he responsible for the additional thirty two thousand dollars? Because he bid. He was the contractor, he he placed the bid. Because the Did we the, change after he the it, did we change the specs 
after the fact? Yes, the engineer came up with a typical design for the overhangs. Okay, but, but you was have that his fault? He knew no. what the requirement, requirements of what we had requested. He, I mean, he, if he came up with a typical overhang and he knew that we were looking at the depot design of six feet rather than three or whatever, why didn't it, he bid it accordingly in his original bid? At the time of the bid, the engineer didn't know what the contractor was going to have for his roof, tri for his roof truss system. But, and we are the victims, again, the owner. If, if, so we, have, if, if we had this information, if, if we had all this information, Commissioner, at bid time, this amount of dollars would have been added to the bid. Exactly. Well, why wouldn't it? Because you have, you have an architect, you have a contractor, you have an engineer. All of these people are, are on board. They are part of this bid. And when that contractor bid the program, he should have been bidding it off of the documents that they had provided. And if the documents that they provided didn't include this, then there's a, there's a breakdown somewhere. <laughs> Am I wrong, Mr. Bowman? Well, this, this, it's a little bit of a different situation in that it was a design build as opposed to having a separate architectural firm. So there is a little bit of difference in, in You had an architect, though, didn't you? Yes, sir, you had an architect, but, but in the past, uh, Henry County has hired an architect to do all their design work and all their drawings. And so you've had an architectural set of drawings out there for bid. In this case, the architect, and, and, and what you're saying is partially right, partially, and probably more so than partially, but what happens is, is you've got an architect that's now working in conjunction with, he don't work for Henry County, he's working with the, the builder in design builds, but that, and what happens is the, what he's saying is, is true, what Ron's saying is true. You have your, your structural, from a standpoint of trusses, the trusses have to be designed by a truss engineer and that trust engineer was going by a typical design as opposed to an atypical design. Well, and I understand what you're saying. It's on the drawings, but if the bottom line is, let's, if it, it's on the drawings, it's six feet. I understand. So you got an issue where the where the truss engineer did not pick up the fact that it was a six foot overhang. Remember one thing. I know I'm not going to convince you this. But had it have been a six-foot overhang, you would have paid the same amount of money because the contractor only put the money in there for the amount that he was working with. Now, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense. but well, I, What you're saying makes sense, but very seldom does when anything come back as a change order, it's the same dollars it would have been had it been included. To begin That's 100% true. That's, a, that's not that's not that's true. That's one hundred percent true. For us being a contractor, we tend to make a portion, a larger portion of our fee and change orders. It, it just seems odd that, that so many times we we are faced with change orders on regardless of the facility, and so many times, and I'm not an authority in this, but so many times the the person that gets hit is always the owner, which is us. And there should be some shared responsibility along the line. And being a design bill versus uh, just a plain uh, contract, I, I, I can see, I understand the difference. But somewhere along the line, what it should have been included in, or it comes as a change order, it would be hard for me to believe that the $32,000, it would have been a $32,000 addition from the beginning, and it's only 32000 now. Well, you, you, I would say that you're 99.9% .9 right. Yes, sir. It would, have been, it would have been a little bit different because at that point in time, they're actually bidding to try and secure the project as opposed to, okay, we're going to do it and do it that yeah. way. There is, I mean, I, I understand both sides of it. I really do. Uh, and it would have been less money. But, but I think that we... I, I believe that Ron negotiated that number down from a that higher is, number and told me we're not going to pay that much money. And I, it, it started, I, and I'm going to apologize for that. It started with $52,000. But that's, that's the, the inflated part that I'm talking about, yeah. too. So it, this may be hard thought. Very well, maybe. I don't know that. And I'm not coming down on you, Ron, because you, you're bringing it up 
now. You have to. This is prior to Ron, too. I want to make sure that we know that, that this, he, got, he kind of inherited this one, and, and we're going to make it better. But these are issues that, um, that really bother me. And, and when you come back and you say, well, this project is under budget, it is under budget, but it's 32000 more than we had anticipated, too, in actual cost, so any way you cut it. So. Yes, sir. And, and again, to reiterate, um, our path forward, okay, we're, we're changing the way that we're doing business as far as the coordination between the architect, the engineer. One of the critical things that we're doing now is what's called shop drawings, which is what, it, what will be submitted by the, the uh, trust manufacturer. We're physically getting those drawings in our office and in-house we're looking at those, so any kind of error like this that comes up in the future or any kind of uh, hopefully it's just one more stopgap measure to, to catch it. It's basically one more set of eyes that will that Correct. hopefully would catch the fact that your trusses were not at that six foot overhang length. But uh, I, being in the business, I, I know very well that it's it, it's it, it's not that easy to catch every single thing that comes through. So, uh, but I do understand, uh, Mr. Mr. Holer's 100 percent correct, and in. in in that being here for the last four years and seeing some of the some of the change orders that it came through that were actually whited out and and sent to us and then of course it that had already been done there's been a lot of that that's gone on in the past this is BR before Ron but uh, on the same side of that I you know we've had it from our jails to some other areas that were I mean it was just work that was just run through without without us knowing when we were in here voting on change orders already been completed. And in some cases they probably needed to be, but but not as much as they probably were. And and some of them were uh, some of them very strong change orders. So. but I understand and, and uh, uh, you know I, I it's hard for me sometimes to set up here and tell you exactly how it should go because and there's no perfect builders or buildings or architects, either one. We all find mistakes and things that we do, but thank you. Any other questions or comments? If not, uh, Mr. Roark, this lies in your district, and it's a resolution approving the change order for the Forts and Library, and I'll entertain a motion. Uh, move to approve. Have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Basler. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Moving on to planning and zoning services, a resolution awarding a bid to purchase lighting fixtures and accessories. Our presenter is Mike Keeble, Director of Facilities Maintenance, Exhibit Number 4. Good morning. Good morning. The Henry County Facilities Maintenance, Maintenance Department was awarded an energy efficiency conservation block grant to upgrade the energy efficiency of assisting, existing county buildings. Part of this grant provides for the purchase of lighting fixtures, bulbs, and ballast for fleet services. This request was processed through the purchasing department, and the bid notice was issued to 11 area and national vendors. The bid documents were posted at the county website, and the bid notice was listed at the ACCG GLGA website. Six vendors submitted bids for the materials, and bid tab is attached for a price comparison. Department personnel recommend the award to E. Sam Jones Distributors in the amount of $11,227.85. This vendor submitted the lowest and most responsive bid, and the vendor is bidding on exact requirements. This is at no cost to the county. It's fully funded through this grant. Yes, ma'am. Does any board member have a question or comment? If not, you have before you a resolution awarding the bid for the purchase of the lighting fixtures, and I will entertain a motion. Move to approve. Motion to approve by Mr. Stamey. Second. Second by Mr. Basler. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. The next item is a resolution to approve a streetlight district for the Russell Estate Subdivision. Michael Harris, Planning and Zoning Division Director, will be our presenter. Exhibit number 5. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, Board of Commissioners. Um, in accordance with Section 3-5-491 of our Kern County Code, the property owners of Russell Estates Unit 1 have submitted a petition to the Planning and Zoning Department for the establishment of a streetlight district. The, pet the petition represents 16 affirmative votes representing 94% of the property owners, whereas 51% is typically is, is what's required. Um, in this case, Henry County will pay monthly lighting charges and in return assess the property owners $28.24 annually on their property tax bills. So this morning we're asking for approval of the resolution 
to adopt this as a streetlight district. If there are no questions pertaining to this item, this lies in district number three, and I will look to Mr. Stamey for a motion. Madam Chair, I do have a question. Mr. Stamey. Uh, Michael, do we know for sure, I didn't see it in here, I don't know if he rejected or uh, approved it, but the gentleman on the very end of the street, Vince, I know you're here, uh, his name is Jennings. He is not a part of this, correct? No, sir, he's not. Because his mailbox is on McGarity, so he won't be charged for this, correct? correct. Okay. With that, I'd like to make a motion we approve then, okay? I have a motion by Mr. Stamey. Is there a second by Mr. Roark? All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is an overview of some of the major accomplishments within the Planning and Zoning Services Division for 2010. Michael Harris again is our presenter, and that's exhibit number six. Thank you again, Chairman. I, in light of the long agenda, I, I'm going to make this really brief. Just really wanted to touch on a couple of the accomplishments throughout the, throughout the division throughout the course of the year. Um, some of the divisions, obviously, like planning and zoning, you see fairly often, but some of the other, what, other departments, GIS, facilities maintenance, you don't necessarily see on a regular basis. So I just really want to kind of let you all know some of the things that have gone on in addition to their day-to-day -day functions. Um, beginning with GIS, Ms. Pat Delk serves as the director there. Um, one of the principal um, accomplishments over the course of the year was the adoption of the or the, the acquisition of our new color aerials, aerial photography. Um, we typically try to do this every couple of years, and, and it's truly a critical element for use by our public safety um, departments, uh, police, fire, E911 services. They need those updated maps to make sure they have up-to-date equipment, up-to-date mapping on exactly where new roads and new locations are. So that's a critical element, as well as um, working with the tax commissioner for the successful migration and integration of the 2010 tax digest as well as successful coordination with our census this year. Um, a lot of the data, before they can even get, begin the process, they had to work in conjunction with our GIS department to make sure they had accurate um, address information. So they were critical in that, in that endeavor. Um, moving on to the building department, Mr. Bert Foster, um, new department head after a couple of, after, after, after the department had two years of not having the building department um, uh, director, Bert was able to come in, done a lot of overhaul within the department, new forms, new formatting, um, new banking procedures, new website to kind of overhaul the department. And one thing I really wanted to make sure I, I stress was the number of building permits are actually from last year, from, the, from this time last year, we've actually issued 41 more building permits than we did last year. And just as important, if not more so, our total deposits from last year are up $30,000 from last year at this very same time. So, you know, while there has been, we've recognized, we've seen the slowdown, you know, just let everyone know that we are still moving forward. We are still progressing within that department. So, you can have done a wonderful job. Um, Mike Kebo oversees our facilities maintenance department. Um, and as you just saw, another example of the, um, the work that's being done with the grant monies that were awarded. Henry kind of was awarded over $750,000. And to date, that department has spent over close to $150,000 on various various system upgrades, including the probate court, juvenile probation, um, numerous fire stations, life management solutions. We've done lighting upgrades at fleet services and juvenile probation. Um, beyond that, they've also done numerous remodeling projects for the stormwater departments, police, as well as administration offices, uh, demolition projects. And, you know, something you don't hear often, um, but charity assistance. One of the big projects we had this year was assisting with the Haven House, the Blessings Thrift Store. Staff went out and helped assist with the, um, uh, the Fuller House, um, helped with their efforts to bring that building back up to, um, to kind of give it a, a facelift, if you will. And, and beyond even some of the smaller things that they work on, a couple of weeks ago, um, Ms. Denise and Ms. Joyce Rogers needed some assistance working for this year's with their Connecting Henry for the work to do with uh, the families. Contacted Mike Keeble, he and one of his staff members on a Saturday morning, got a truck, drove down to Lawrenceville to, to help bring some of the toys and, and some of the materials they needed back for Connecting Henry. So again, a lot of the little things that go on that people really have no idea what takes place, but it's, it's a real attribute um, to, to Mike and his department, what he's done with the department. Um, lastly, our planning and zoning department. I know you see Sherry up here often. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is that what's being done in the Planning and Zoning Department now actually represents a consolidation of, of two, depart two, three departments in actuality. Planning and Zoning has now been merged into um, 
um, or transportation planning has emerged in the planning zoning, as well as many of the functions of the development plan review department. So um, we've reduced our staff, still been able to maintain some of the same things, the same services, same level of services, um, being able to consolidate a number of departments within, that, within the planning and zoning department while maintaining the same level of, um, of, of, of zoning. Zoning requests have not gone down. In fact, they've, they've increased over the, last couple of, over the last year as well. Um, some of the major accomplishments include the approval of the recent LCI, the Hudson Bridge Road and Jonesboro Road, um, first one for the county. So, again, that's a, a big plus on our stand. And we're moving forward after the board's action last week to do a supplemental study for that as well. Um, over 40 text amendments. And while that's been somewhat painful at times, um, certainly it's part of the process as we move forward to a more, a more usable, more accurate um, code, code book. So, again, crafting the new language and making sure everything is, 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 is where it needs to be has been a, a, a tremendous step for the staff. Um, over $50,000, $50,000 gateway grant was received, applied for and received by the Planning and Zoning Department over the last year, and that's being used towards our landscaping project at I-75 to State Route 20. Um, this combined with, you know, the usual, the annual things of the um, short-term work program, solid waste management program, um, and revamping our, our the, the department's website. Those are just some of the few things. Just want to kind of bring it to your attention and let you all know, it's just, you know, just some of the great things that are being done within the department, within those respective, um, within the division and within those respective departments. So. Thank you for that update. You're right. These are some departments that don't get a lot of attention. Planning and zoning does if there's a contentious zoning, but for the most part, the building department, facility maintenance, and GIS are some of those unsung heroes. And we certainly appreciate everything that they do and, and the county functions and operates. Um, so well um, with the cooperation of all these departments, and, and we're, we're certainly appreciative of, of their efforts. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Moving on to public works, the first item is a <clears throat> resolution to approve an agreement for envir environmental services for State Route 138 Hempville Intersection Improvement Project. Our presenter is Terry McMichael, Public Works Division Director, Exhibit Number 7. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and Board Members. Do have a change order request here for to do some environmental services for pre-property acquisition associated with the intersection improvements at Hemp Hill and 138 on the northeast quadrant of that intersection. We believe there used to be an old gas station there. Um, we further talked to some residents along uh, that live out there and been there for a while, and they they think that there used to be tanks there as well. So this request here is to do um, an environmental site assessment as well as a geophysical survey to determine the location of any possible underground storage tanks. Um, URS uh, is the engineer that is currently doing that project. They have an environmental department as well. They have given us a quote of $10,000 to do this and it is our recommendation uh, to use them, and there is sufficient funds within the Henry County DOT budget for this project, even though it's a joint project. We had some money for the design and right-of-way acquisition for this project, and SPLOST has some money as well for the construction. So we have enough money in our portion of that to cover those costs. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Sorry, does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? Madam Chair, Mr. Stamey? Um, here, this subdivision off, I know it not at this point, but at some point had some developer participation in it? In that subdivision that was zoned many years ago behind there? David, do you remember? I, I believe that the subdivision uh, Bella Estates or something like that, X amount of dollars per lot. I yeah, it was it per lot. You remember that? That there was some participation there? Of course, I don't think that development is hmm, happening anymore. There, there was, but that, that development's, I, th I believe the bank's taking the property back over, and I don't think there's nothing going on. And it was, this was, yeah, this is like a BR before read, but it was, uh, I remember that there was, they were going to do, uh, it was going to be based on lot sales when lot sold. It, it wasn't going to be something that was going to be donated up front. But, uh, That's correct. <coughs> okay. Just a question. 
Mr. Basler. Is that is that the corner where there's nothing at, or is that where the old rock building is? That's where the old rock building is. That Thirty years, I don't remember any no, but they, I, pumps there. I would, but it's been a little bit of baby say yeah. That's the site. There's, they could very well possibly be something. Warren, Commissioner <laughs> <laughs> Holden. <laughs> I have some questions, and, and uh, I, I don't want to sound so negative on every project today. But it's going to cost us ten thousand dollars to determine whether or not there was a. a fuel storage or, or service station on the, on this particular site. Who owns this property? Current property owner does. I'm and sorry. The, the, I'm, I don't know the property owner's name, but we are we have not purchased the right-of-way there yet. I, I understand. I understand. But do you know who the property owner is? Obviously, it belongs to somebody. I'd have to look it up. It doesn't me. matter. But the point is, we don't own it. No, and sir. if we buy it, either from right-of-way I thought the law, and I defer to the attorney, if if they sell you a piece of that property, it's supposed to be free and clear environmentally. And, and uh, why would, if, tell me why, I know we, if we condemn it and take it, I guess it'd be our, you know, our cost, but is it not the property owner's responsibility to provide a, an environmental letter that saying there's nothing hazardous on that piece of property before it can be sold? Um, normally during the, um, in most standard contracts, I'm trying to remember the language, um, the owner will certify that there are no known environmental issues. Right. And they will send the key something word is known. That's but, right. Uh, the unknown is what gets you. But exactly. Well, if we're going to acquire the property, we still have due diligence on our. I would say the county will still have some due diligence because if the owner is wrong, either blatantly wrong or um, unaware of any existing um, problems, then we will have a tough time trying to go back after that owner. I, I would comment like this: We are the ones that are out there trying to acquire either easement or right away. Property owner hasn't come to us and said, hey, I want to sell you this property. We we will be coming to them. If we acquire something from that point, the property owner could very likely say, look, I, I'm happy just sitting here the way I am. Best as long as you leave it alone, it's safe, but when you stir it up, uh, it, it becomes a hazard. Is that correct? I, I think, I think the, the the way that we're approaching this is more of a due diligence. If we acquire an easement and we later find out during construction, let's say we start digging some dirt and we find that there's uh, some contamination, that project's going to stop. We're going to have certainly a huge change order at that point. And then who is responsible for either tank removal or at this stage of the game, it's information. You know, once we obtain that information, then we can then negotiate with that property owner as to what's going to occur. You know, that would certainly be a part of that acquisition. So it's, you know, on our part, it's buyer beware. In this case, we're the buyer, so we're trying to do our due diligence to make sure what we're getting into. And I'm assuming the property owner is granting you permission to go on the property and test? We will certainly get permission before we get there. So yes, you don't know at this point if they're going to do that? Well, I feel like they will. I don't know why they wouldn't. But That piece of property was actually, uh, it's zone C something. One or two. Huh? One, or One or two because they were going to put a convenience store on it back three plus or minus years ago. They came to the board with a zoning request. and. It, did all, it was kind of like grandfathered in, in a way. But anyway, uh, are we, on the design, aren't we realigning uh, to pick up West Hempfield? Or, I mean, are we moving further to the west with, with Hempfield in order to realign? Because right now it's a disconnect. You come out on West Hempfield there, and East Hempfield goes, uh, you know, it's above it. Yes, sir, we are realigning. And, and you know, the road's shifting more on the west side to come in more to 90. Um, so we're lining up with 
more we, rest we were at West Hempfield and not East Hempfield. That's correct. But we are having to change the grade of that intersection. Uh, because 138 is in a curve and the other one's coming on to make those, uh, when you cross over, uh, to make those alignments ride well and not just come over like an intersection. I'm sure you've been over some that you like going over a hump. To make those things line well, we're going to have to change the grade a pretty good bit. When you change the grade, you know, you're adding fill. That, the limits of that project is going to extend out into that, into that parcel. It'll actually go west also more to that old, I, I don't know if anyone lives in that little white house on the corner of Hip Hill and 138, but some of the things I've seen, looks like we're going to have a big guardrail and some, you know, preliminary that we're going to be raising there, we're going to have a guardrail there, and, and I, I'm, I'm curious is that you couldn't just stay away from the rock house and we couldn't just go ahead and move it instead of realigning west, realigning east, and and not get into that particular situation. We're going to probably end up having to buy that little white house anyhow. Well, we've already, we are going to have to do, and I think, David, have we already done some early acquisition on the west side? West quadrant, and um, but I think you're talking about a southeastern corner. That's right. Where they had a small amount of frontage on Hemp Hill, most of their frontage is on 138. That will be basically the reasoning for guardrail and a gravity wall there is to keep the road widening from getting on the house during the right, right away acquisition. That you know that's subject to change, but. The uh, northeast corner, a lot of that is the miter, because you'll have a right turn lane and you'll have strain poles for the signal. So that's such a small lot where the little block building is um, that you're acquiring a large percentage of that lot just to get a right away miter to for a signal. Right. We'll end up with most of it, and we, I would imagine we'll probably end up, I've, I've had some conversations with the uh, the owners of the little white property will end up with that one way or the other uh, simply because we'll either do it because we want to or we'll do it because we have to, but that's another story. But anyway, it, it, I understand what you're saying because of our in and out and the miter and trying to make that work because the other side, the the northwest corner, you know, at one time there was a Publix looking at that. There were several things looking at that property before the economy started its little downturn. But Commissioner Basler and myself met with them on a, several occasions. So, anyhow, I just want to be sure that we, we make, you know, if we could, if we don't have to have as much of it and we don't end up with that situation because if you find it, it's going to get real expensive. Yes, sir, and that, that's just the assessment, and I'm glad you mentioned that because um, the assessment will locate the tank and do some testing of the ground. If there happens to be contamination or uh, our tank there or anything that has to be removed, we'll have additional fees for that, and then then we'll be in a, in a situation, as Commissioner Holder said, we'll have to certainly get with the property owner in any acquisition. That will have to be... Uh, part of that discussion is who's going to remove the tank and who's going to deal with any contaminated soils. Uh, but we have to take this first step first. Probing around on their property, I think we need to not only have the permission but do our leg work and our ground work so we don't get caught like that. But I, if my memory serves me right, the pages on that property and the house you're talking about is the caches. I think, yeah, I think, we're, I think we know who. I think you're correct. Mm -hmm. All right, if there's no further discussion on this item, you have before you a resolution to um, approve the services of URS Corporation in the amount of $10,000. And is it, y'all split that this group? Yeah. Okay, who wants to jump in first and make the motion? Move to approve, Madam Chair. I have a motion by Mr. Basler, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The next item is a resolution to approve a change order for State Route 138 Hemp Hill Intersection Improvement, and that's going to be Exhibit Number 8. This is a request for a fee increase for engineering services associated with this same intersection at uh, State Route 138 Hemp Hill Road and West Hemp Hill Road. What we discovered when we 
define the scope of work for the design of the intersection. We basically uh, established a, what I would call a footprint. We said, you know, the design of this road already incorporates certain limits uh, on 138 and certain limits on Hemp Hill and West Hemp Hill. After the survey work was done and the design was, I would say, in the preliminary stages, uh, approaching final stages, we discovered that there's a curve coming, uh, if you're eastbound or coming toward 138, there's a curve there that does not have the proper super elevation in it. Our project ties into that curve. Uh, the, what's out there now is just normal crown. Uh, the super elevation rate, I think, is a .034, something like that. So what would happen, if, if, I don't know if y'all been in curves that are not properly super elevated, but you know, you're, you're curving to the left and the roadway slope in the opposite direction, and it's, it's not the most comfortable feeling. My thoughts on this was, number one, we're making an intersection improvement out here because of safety reasons. We've had a lot of accidents there. We've had fatalities. So there's always a problem with these uh, construction projects or these intersection improvement projects, and I call it Project Creep. Where do you stop? You know, when you tie into a roadway and it's not up to the standard it should be, do you just stop and leave it? Do you fix it? Um, so this one, quite honestly, is is uh, is one of those type projects. Do you, you know, do you do you fix it while you're there, or you, do you leave it alone? The the engineering cost is um, thirteen thousand three hundred. Again, it's unfortunate. Um, probably, if we'd have done a, a, a massive amount of in of uh, scope work at the beginning of this project and checked out all the approaches and done some preliminary design in-house, we could have probably increased the the footprint of that project and got the original, you know, the, the original engineering services would have been correct. But typically what we do is what we think will be enough to cover this project and, and go from there. After discovering this, uh, to correct this problem, we're going to have to go back and change part of the existing roadway about 400 feet to correct it. When you change that 400 feet, you just don't change those plans. You have to change the cover sheet, the cross sections, the profiles. Just about everything gets reworked inside the plan. So it's a lot of time and effort to do that, but basically that's what it is. We want to go ahead and correct that curve and try to make that intersection as, as uh, safe as we can. So there'll be, in doing that, it'll change the, the typical section of the roadway. When you super elevate the road correctly, we'll have to widen the shoulders and probably push the ditches out a little bit, which means we'll probably have to get some construction easements, which means we'll probably have to get, you know, some addition right away parcels to show those easements. So, you know, there's some extra surveying. There's extra design, and then modify all the plan sheets. So we're we're asking that the board support this, and that change order request will be thirteen thousand three hundred for URS. Mr. Bowman, the uh, as and I think you're aware of this. We uh, we have uh, Johnny and I split that <laughs> district. We've made that pretty plain. That uh, particular intersection. We only have $1.2 million in, in SPLOS funds in order to do this. Uh, and it's going to be well in it more, uh, it's going to be a lot more than $1.2 million. Uh, how far are we going to go? I mean, is there any thoughts that we may get some state DLT money? It is north of McDonough. We might could get some from them, but. Uh, is there any thoughts that we may be able to get a little bit of state money on this or some help or because how far do we how much further do we go knowing that we don't have enough money to do the intersection that's a good question um, we can certainly try to pursue some state aid funds for this project um, I believe this is one that we submitted back about three years ago two years ago for state aid money and um, so there could be an opportunity to get some there. I'll certainly can check with the state aid coordinator and, 
and see what the results of that are. Um, but it, I don't know if, if y'all remember or not, when we turned in a list of projects for possible state aid money, we had about seven categories, and this is the one that we put in for an intersection because of the accident history and and all that. So we can check on the results of that and and see. And obviously, we've had fatalities there, and it's been uh, it's been very expensive. But uh, the issue, I think, uh, is you know when when we're talking about another 400 feet, and we're talking about uh, once we get into new. Uh, right of way and, and easements, that's obviously, that's what really starts to run our numbers up because they're always unknown. Um, I, I'm just curious, is it, it, just doing the, the engineering and design is one thing, but at the end of the day, if, if it's that much money less, we may not be able to do that, that extra 400 feet. This construction won't be, the, the easements are what they are. I mean, the construction of this really will be more, the fix for this will be more of a um, resurfacing and overlay. It's not a massive regrading that part of the section of the road. To correct the super, I, I feel like we can do that with, with asphalt. So, I mean, asphalt's not cheap, but it's not regrading and, and so it's not going to change. It's not going to change our uh, having to purchase any easements. The but this this particular change order does not have anything to do with having to buy more property or having to have more construction easements or anything else. This is just to fix the super or whatever you called it. So. We may have to get a little more construction easements because when we fix the cross slope of the road and and elevate one side, then when we fill the shoulder on that side and flush it back up and and uh, okay. get a correct shoulder in there, it may be a small construction easement. I don't think, there will, I, I can't imagine any additional right-of-way acquisition, but there may be some construction easement simply because you're going to be filling on that side, which means you're going to put up some silt fence, which you're probably going to have to have a little construction easement. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Any additional questions? If not, there is a resolution before you approving the change order, and I'll entertain a motion. Oh, Mr. Basler. Motion. Have a motion by Mr. Basler, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? The motion carries 5 0. And, Terry, if you will indulge me for one moment, I'm going to skip down on the agenda because we have an item under public safety, and I'm sure that. Uh, Ms. Jerry Yoder is probably just entranced with all that's going on here, but this is such a simple item. If you would come forward and make your presentation so we can get you out of here. It's a resolution to accept a grant from the Pedigree Foundation for Henry County Animal Care and Control, and that's going to be exhibit number 11. Thank Good morning. You. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, grant funding for animal shelters uh, is extremely limited. And what there is out there available is almost exclusively limited to animal shelters who have a 501c3 tax exempt status. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank the board, Ms. Wiley, Mr. Bush, those, of, uh, those that had the hand in obtaining the Henry First tax exempt status for the county. Without that tax exempt status, we would not have been able to apply for this grant. So I'm very, very grateful that we have that now. When retail shoppers purchase pedigree branded dog food products, a portion of that purchase price is donated to the Pedigree Foundation. The purpose of the foundation is to work with animal shelters and to provide grant funding uh, to, to assist in finding adoptable dogs' homes. On November 30th of this year, the Henry County Animal Care and Control Department received a $653.87 grant from the Pedigree Foundation. The grant money is specifically uh, designated to be used to benefit dog adoptions uh, from the animal shelter within one year. Uh, so if approved, the grant funds will be used to, to purchase preventative illness vaccines for our dogs housed at the shelter. Are there any questions or comments pertaining to this item? All right, if not, you have before you a resolution authorizing the acceptance of the grant, and I'll entertain a motion. We have a motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you.
All right, we will back up to um, an, the item C under, um, I think, Public Works, and that's a resolution to approve a revised agreement regarding an eastbound right turn lane on Bill Gardner Parkway. Again, our presenter is Terry McMickle, and that's exhibit number 21. Madam Chair, this is a, uh, and board members, a revised agreement regarding an eastbound right turn lane on Bill Gardner Parkway that would begin at the northbound exit ramp of I-75 and ex extending to Tanger Boulevard. We have had this before you, I believe, at least three other times, and I think this may be the fourth time. Um, the reason we're back before you today is we had entered an original agreement with Shy Investments. Um, we have since that time received a portion of that money. Uh, there was supposed to be 100000 coming from that side. The county furnishes 100, City of Locust Grove 100, for a total of 300. We have we have received $33,333 and I think 66 cent. The Shine investment was to come back and sign the agreement. During that process, the, uh, the managing partner of Shine Investments, that changed and a new managing partner was put in place by that group. Uh, since that time, we have uh, made numerous meetings with them and going over cost of this project and uh, talking with their project manager and their attorney as well. <clears throat> We finally have another agreement before you today that has been signed uh, by those, uh, by Shy Investments One. So we would ask the board to approve this resolution, um, which will allow us to proceed. Once we get the remainder of that money, then we will start uh, preparing the bid documents and getting that project out to bid and proceed on with it. So would ask the, uh, the board to allow the, the county to sign this agreement. Uh, and it also, um, at the bottom of this resolution, uh, we would allow, ask that you grant the approval of the transfer of the 100000 from the Capital Projects Fund to fulfill the county's obligation in regards to this project as well. So that is a part of this resolution as well. And also that this resolution uh, would supersede all the previous resolutions that have been brought before you. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And uh, Ms. Wiley has been involved in this uh, quite a lot, so she's kind of up to speed on what has happened to that as well. But I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Well, Tanya, you're comfortable with everything in this agreement? Yes, yes, Madam Chair, I am. I drafted it, and the county, uh, the most important thing is that the county, is, the extent of the county's liability in this matter is the $100,000 shy investments under this agreement is solely responsible for any overages. Of, I want to commend um, David Simmons and, and Terry's office for getting information that, will, that suggests that there won't be much overages, but um, the county's liability is fixed. Any board member have any questions or comments pertaining to this item? I'd just like to make a comment. Uh, we are capped at 100000 and if it's, any, if it's less than, then the, the difference would be shared equally between the three partners. And I want to draw, bring uh, attention to the fact of who the three responsible parties are. And uh, if you look at the location of this particular project, there's a very important player that's not present. So with that, I move to approve the agreement. Okay. Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Holder and a second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? The motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you, Board. Moving on to finance, the first item is a resolution to authorize financing to purchase police cars, ambulances, heavy equipment, and other equipment. Our presenter is Mike Bush, Finance Director, Exhibit Number 9. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and Board Members. <clears throat> several, Several... Uh, meetings ago, we had an RFP for ambulances where we we're going to purchase, I think it's five new ambulances and rechassis two others. And there were other needs that were 
addressed during our budget process, and we are now at the point to where we've gone through those needs, assessed them, and determined what we think we need to go out and do a lease purchase for this year. This will be the first time we've done one in three years. We haven't done a lease purchase in the last two years. And um, there's a list of all the items that we're uh, looking to purchase, which include the ambulances, uh, two pumpers, um, eight Crown Vicks, five Sheriff's car Crown Vicks again. Um, there are some various IT needs uh, or technology services needs that we have to have. EMA, there are some weather sirens that we have need for and a new radio system that will go into effect once we move into the new building. Uh, there's some additional large equipment that we're purchasing for the landfill that we own. Uh, transit, there's a, a, a 30 passenger bus, E911, there's a new phone system, furniture and recorder. That totals $5,524,590 out of which the general fund will be responsible responsible for uh, four million five hundred thousand of that and the rest would be through e911 so it's not a total general fund uh, need at this point uh, we have uh, we called local banks to see if any of the local banks could qualify under the new uh, rules and guidelines for banks and then this borrowing is a little higher than what any of our local banks could come up with as far as loaning money so we called three other large banks. One refused to give a quote. One issued a interest rate but could not issue a term sheet. They decided they couldn't make their interest rate work. And the other, SunTrust, and they gave us an interest rate of 2.985 um, for a 10-year period. Um, <clears throat> we put $750,000 a year in the capital projects fund for items such as this. Um, and I'd be glad to take any questions. We just ask that you uh, approve this resolution so we can purchase cars. The reason we're bringing it to you today is we've purchased some of these items already and you only have a certain distance that you can go back and, and pay for those, get, reimburse the county for those purchases and that's why we're having to bring it today. City board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? Try, yeah. Mr. Stamey? Mike, the last one that we did four years ago, approximately three years ago, what was the interest rate then? Like 4.1. I thought this was a great rate, yeah. So there's some good savings there. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Ms. Wiley? And I think for some of these items, they still have to be put out for bid, and this doesn't yes, authorize the, the actual purchase of them. That is okay. correct. But when we come back to you with these, the funding source is available. That's why we go ahead and do this as well. Are there any additional questions? All right, if not, you have before you a resolution for the purpose of authorizing the financing through SunTrust Bank for the purchase of the police cars, and I will entertain a motion. I have a motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The next item is a resolution reallocating SPLOS funds that were reimbursed by ARRA funds for the Eagles Lane and Parkway project. Our presenter is Mike Butch. Mike Butch. I've changed your name, Mike. Mike Bush. <laughs> finance director and that's going to be exhibit number 10 and I believe you have a new exhibit number 10 that was on your um, lane in front of you when you sat down okay. yes sir. we we have resolution number 10 185 which is we came to the board and basically said that the funding source for Eagles Landing Parkway the construction funding source for Eagles Landing Parkway is this ARRA funds and so by, by using that money, we had to reallocate the construction funds that Districts 3, 4, and 5 had placed on this particular, uh, on Eagles Landing Parkway. Um, that resolution basically said we would be back at a later time to allocate or reallocate those funds, and that's what we're here today for. Um, District 3 would be allowed to reallocate $5,500,193.85 to Campground Road Extension. This was also a SPLOS, uh, an original SPLOS project that was voted on by the citizens in November of 2007. Uh, District 5 would be allowed to reallocate $3,666,795.90 to the Fairview Road project. And District 4 will be able to reallocate $9,166,989.75 to the Rock Quarry Road project all of these projects were original SPLOS projects voted on by the uh, citizens of Henry County. The difference in the, in the new resolution and the old resolution is District 4 uh, will be responsible to cover any shortfalls on the Eagles Landing Parkway project 
Um, if there's any overruns on the budget, then District 4 has made it known that he will cover those overages with his money that he's reallocating today. We may have to come back and reallocate money back to Eagles Landing, but since District 4 says that, they, that he will take care of the overages, that allows District 3 and District 5 to actually spend this money effective today. District 4 will be allowed, that reallocation will be allowed to be spent uh, once, um, uh, let's see, the SPLOS management uh, can certify the Eagles Landing Parkway project is substantially complete and within budget. Um, and currently we're about 41% through with the Eagles Landing Parkway project, and so far it, it's running uh, within budget. So we feel like that this, this reallocation will take place today and that those monies will be released in the near future for District 4, but District 5 and District 3 money is released today. Does any board member have a question or comment per pertaining to this item? Uh, Mr. Bowman. Yeah, the, uh, we have contingencies, and Rocky's not here, but we, we're, we're within budget, but we're within budget due to contingencies. There are some change orders uh, that have come through because of uh, wetlands and some other things that were that we have, you know, where we didn't have the right amount of soil test or whatever. But whatever reason, we've had some issues with that. Also, once we move over to the other side, there may be some others. So uh, the, the reason we'll be substantially complete by February of 12 with Eagles Land and Parkway, providing we don't run into, you know, a hugely wet winter. Um, that I understand that, and that uh, we, like I said, we're, we we understand that we're covering anything overages in the other two districts. That therefore they can go ahead and start their whatever engineering or whatever they need to do in order to go ahead and, and get that work underway. Any additional questions or comments? All right. If not, you have a resolution before you approving the reallocation of the SPLOS dollars into District Three, Four, and Five. And I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Bowman. Second by Mr. Roark. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Oh, are you, are you in opposition? No, no, no. Oh. I guess it was hard. Oh, you were having a short arm. Okay. Every time I had the short arm, all right, moving on to public safety, uh, item B, resolution to accept a grant from the Georgia Association of Emergency Medical Services. Our presenters, Chief Brad Johnson of the Fire Department, exhibit number 12. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Before you today is a acceptance resolution for the grant from the Georgia EMS. This grant is being distributed from by Georgia EMS from the Georgia Trauma Commission uh, for licensed EMS units that applied for this grant. The total funding is $5,776 uh, with no match for it. If there are no questions, you have before you a resolution accepting the uh, grant, and I will entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second, second by Mr. Basler. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The next item is a resolution to approve an intergovernmental agreement with Clayton County regarding the assistance to firefighters <laughs> grant for EKG transmission. That's exhibit number 13. Yes, ma'am. Exhibit 13 is requiring or asking for permission for intergovernmental governmental agreement with Clayton County. Clayton County Fire Department, uh, I guess, requested funding through the American for Firefighters Assistance Program and got a grant to help with regional EKG transmission. One of our goals is for our citizens to recognize a heart attack in the field, transmit that data to the hospital prior to arrival from our ambulances. This grant will allow us to put the PC gateways, our, our machine talks to the hospital's machines, and cables and the cardiac monitor subscriptions for that software. Um, this is part one. There are other parts to a, a grant we're applying for, either through Henry Medical or through the Trauma Commission for AVL um, and data access. But this right here is part one to that process for us to to be able to transmit EKGs from our ambulances to the hospital facilities. Well, I know a lot of people are probably curious as to why we're entering into an intergovernmental agreement with Clayton County regarding this, but it, it, it seems that the grants of late are all collaborative grants. It is. And they cross multiple departments or multiple jurisdictions, and that seems to be the new wave of the future when, with grant funding. Yes, ma'am. This is the same project for the local hospitals. 
I think uh, it's eight departments that actually went in together to, to say this is the best thing for our citizens to do and how, what's the best chance for us to get this, this funding uh, regionally. Are there any questions or comments? Mr. Holder? Chief Johnson, is, with the exception of this regional grant and what we've just talked about, I, I've noticed that the fire department does very well in getting grants. Who, who applies for your grants and who does the grant work? We kind of share that. Chief Lacey does most of the large grants uh, and get the grant funding or achieves grant funding for that. But uh, we have different varieties. Some of our, our Captain Kunkel is very big. He's on the uh, Trauma Commission Board trying to get our AVO grant through, uh, and that will provide GPS and data transmission for our ambulances. Uh, so it's, it's a very similar people. That Chief Lacey is the primary. But it does, all of the grant work is done from within the department. Yes, sir, it is. There's not an official okay. grant writer for our that's, department. That's what I need to know. Thank you. And you'll be, you've been very successful to, yes, to you and Chief Lacey or whoever. It's been a good job. You've got a lot of funding. If there are no additional questions, you have before you a resolution approving the intergovernmental agreement with Clayton County, and I will entertain a motion. Approve motion it. by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? The motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is a resolution awarding a bid to purchase ammunition for the police department. Our presenter is Major Jason Bolton of the police department, exhibit number 14. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. The police department currently uses a jacketed hollow point round for duty purposes. This type of round is pretty much standard for most police departments and the reason for that is that the hollow point round is designed to mushroom or expand when it strikes the target. This lessens the chance that the round will pass through the target and into something that is unintended. Uh, while this type of round is certainly effective and practical for duty purposes, it's also uh, a little more costly than, than other types of ammunition. Uh, in an effort to save money, the department wanted to identify a different type of ammunition for practice purposes that we would be able to obtain. There is a full metal jacket round that we have identified that has a different grain or weight than the hollow point round. And while the full metal jacket round doesn't have the same properties as the hollow point round for what we're wanting to use it for and shooting at paper targets, it would suit our purposes just fine. The purchasing department sent out a, a bid for this type of ammunition and uh, had 12 vendors respond with the lowest bidder being Precision Delta Corp. And they offered this type of ammunition for $197 per case or per thousand rounds. And this is almost a savings of $100 per case uh, with, with what we're paying for for the, the duty ammunition. I believe the exact cost is $96 is what we'd be saving. Uh, the acquisition of this ammunition would allow us to be able to start offering open range practice days again for the officers with the department. It's been quite some time since we've been able to afford them the opportunity to go out and practice and they've been limited in just uh, shooting once a year for the mandatory qualifications. Uh, the police department is requesting authorization to purchase 130,000 rounds of ammunition from Precision Delta Corps at a cost of $25,610. And the police department has budgeted uh, this ammunition uh, money in our capital equipment account. And so we request to be able to do that. If I remember correctly, looking at your budget last year, it looked like um, the police department cut their ammunition budget by about 50 percent. Um, and I'm sure the simulator has assisted you in keeping your officers trained, but it still is not the same as going out on the range and firing the pistol. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. That's okay. correct. Any board member have a question or comment, Mr. Bowman? I just have a comment. I, I want to say, you know, hey, job well done for somebody looking at this. I mean, you know, we we wouldn't know the difference between, uh, you know, between a hollow point and a full metal jacket. We know the difference, but on the same token, that's a that's a thirteen thousand dollar savings on this one request. I mean, that's job well done guys that's, thank you. that's what you need to be looking for and you're doing a good job doing it thank, thank you very you. much appreciate, appreciate that. that thank you any hey, other question or comment I like to the same thoughts Jason that's good I'm glad y'all looking at cost saving stuff for it that affects the entire county I mean it's like getting a, a thousand rounds free every other box right so yes. it's huge thank you thank you I appreciate that all right you have before your resolution awarding the bid to precision Delta Corporation I'll entertain a motion a motion by mr. Second. Bowman second by mr. Stamey all in favor Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you very you. much. I appreciate it. 
The next item is a resolution to accept grant funds from Georgia Emergency Management Agency for the CERT program. And Ms. Susan Clegg is going to present that, exhibit number 15. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is an authorization to, uh, for acceptance of $11,000 in grant funds. These funds are uh, awarded through Georgia Emergency Management and it's for our CERT program, the Citizens Emergency Response Team, which we now have about 220 people uh, qualified through that course. And there's no match involved in this grant. If there are no questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion to approve acceptance of the grant. Approve. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The next item is a resolution to approve a performance partnership agreement with the Georgia Emergency Management Agency, and that is going to be exhibit number 16. Okay, this is um, a performance partnership agreement, and it's through um, Georgia Emergency Management Agency. Uh, Henry County has qualified for this grant uh, through our Emergency Management Agency and therefore we are awarded these funds, uh, $35,802. Uh, there is no match involved in this one either. All right, Mr. Bowman. This is just another example of, of, of our, you know, our county people doing a great job. Thank you. I mean, if I, I've, I'd read the letter from Sonny Perdue uh, that's in our package, and mm -hmm. a, a, another example of just a job well done. Thank you. Thank you. That's two resolutions in $46,000. That's huge in, the, in these tough budget times. If there are no further questions or comments, you have before you a resolution authorizing the execution of the agreement, and I will entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Bowman. Second. Second by Mr. Roark. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The next item is a resolution to accept funds from Georgia's Emergency Management Agency, and that's going, going to be exhibit number 17. These funds are given through Georgia Emergency Management Agency uh, to enhance our Web EOC. The Web EOC is a crisis management system that we use in our Emergency Operations Center, also in our mobile command vehicles. It gives us real-time viewing and tracking of an incident as, it, as it's taking place. And these funds would be used to help us to um, connect with other systems <coughs> in our area, which we're in Area 7. Uh, it would help us connect to other systems in that area. That's what these funds would be used for. There is no match involved in this one either. Have before you a resolution authorizing the acceptance of the funding through GEMA, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Bowman, second by Mr. Roark. All in favor? The motion carries 5 0. And the final item is a resolution to approve a memorandum of, un of agreement with the Georgia Department of Public Safety for the use of property for an antenna receiver space located at 1201 Old Jackson Road, and that's exhibit number 18. Yes. Uh, this is a uh basically a renewal of a memorandum of agreement with the Georgia Department of Public Safety. They currently have an antenna and a receiver located on our uh, radio tower on O. Jackson Road. Um, it helps their reception as far as radio transmission and, and receiving uh, for the Georgia State Patrol. And, of course, we work closely with the Georgia State Patrol. So what this is 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 a dollar a year is how it's worded, that we will let them use that space on our tower. Does anyone have a question or comment pertaining to this item? If not, you have before you a resolution approving the MOU, and I'll entertain a motion. Moved to approve. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on under the county attorney, we have a resolution to approve an intergovernmental contract with the Henry County Development Authority regarding property located in land lot 228 of the 7th District. And our presenter, of course, is Ms. Wiley, and that's exhibit number 19. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Earlier this month, the board approved a land transaction exchange between it and the um, Georgia Department of Transportation. 
Henry County is now in possession of this eight-acre tract that was once owned by GDOT. Um, the intergovernmental agreement before you um, authorizes the chairman to convey the property to the development authority um, in order to finalize the transaction that will facilitate Van Houston Corporation locating to Henry County. And so we will ask that the board approve the resolution authorizing the chairman to execute both the intergovernmental agreement and the deed. There will be a slight modification in the deed. We acquire 8.979 acres. A recent survey shows that we will convey to the development authority approximately 8.66 acres. So the deed will be slightly off than what was actually conveyed to the county. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? If not, you have before you a resolution approving the intergovernmental contract with the Henry County Development Authority, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Roark, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I, I'm going to ask for approval of the September 7, 2010 minutes. There are some um, grammatical corrections that I've made, and if there are no other additions or corrections, I'll entertain a motion on those. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Did anyone sign up for public comment? Mr. County Manager, anything for public session? Ms. County Attorney? No, ma'am. Upcoming meetings and events. Tonight at 7 p.m., we will have the inauguration service for the newly elected commissioners for District 2 and 5 and the returning commissioner for District 4. This event will be held at the County Administration Building located at 140 Henry Parkway, McDonough. It will also be televised live on Charter Station TV 14. The Tuesday, December 21st meeting has been canceled. All county offices will be closed on the following days for the holidays, Thursday, December 24th, and Friday, December 25th. Is that right? That's No. Friday's the 24th. So we will be closed on Thursday, the 23rd, and Friday, December the 24th. Friday, December 31st, and Monday, January 3rd, 2011. Tuesday, January 4th at 9 a.m., we have a regular board meeting. At this time, I do need a motion to convene into executive session for the purposes of potential pending litigation, personnel, and land acquisition matters. Second. Motion by Mr. Roark, second. second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? The motion carries 5-0. I need a motion to reconvene into public session. So motion by Mr. Bowman, a second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. At this time, I need a motion, motion for approval of an affidavit and resolution pertaining to executive session. So moved. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. At this time, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved, Motion by Mr. Basler. Second. Second by Mr. Roark. Gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. We stand adjourned.